Welcome to another edition of Top Stories of the Week at Hornbill TV. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Angeli. The number of dengue cases being reported in Nagaland is disturbing. Uh, we've been very busy here looking for blood donors for several people. Two of my relatives, two caught dengue earlier. Uh, further, it was reported just a few days ago that a person in the Bubar died of dengue too. I think there were two of them, if I'm not mistaken. The brother of one of my colleagues, actually News and Kirakive, is also in need of blood units, I'm told, and he had to rush back to the hospital uh, after taking a half day's leave. Nagaland has blood banks, ladies and gentlemen, but I think we need a little bit more of them. The need is not so much for universal blood types, but for the comparatively rare ones, for instance, blood types such as AB negative, B negative, uh, there is AB positive, A negative and A positive, etc., etc. I think our health authorities should consider starting a dedicated blood bank for uncommon blood types, it will be easier for patients to quickly access it. Second, dengue was not prevalent in Nagaland even about 15 years ago as much as it is being reported today, ladies and gentlemen. I think you may have a sense of this. The growth of dengue may be a warning pointing to a poor urban health checkpoints in the district lack of waste management and proper waste ma management facilities and mechanisms in place, health awareness of the public and other general factors of urban stagnation, especially in places such as Dimapur. This is something to be considered. Third, we seriously, seriously, seriously need concrete traffic enforcement on our roads and highways, ladies and gentlemen. There is one family today in Panambugri who, uh, which uh, will no longer have a mother, a wife and a sister because of another highway stop. A driver mowed down a woman and a, uh, another person early morning today. No disrespect for our authorities, but our press releases and orders and notices announcing speed limits or high sounding speeches and lip service about traffic rules aren't really helping anymore. It's getting old. Laws can work only if there is the force of enforcement. A system needs to be there to ensure prompt and severe action, not after violation only, but before violation. That is the meaning of enforcement, a deterrent. We need strong deterrence. Let's examine the top news events of the week, ladies and gentlemen. This is very sad news. Just today at about six in the morning, a 58-year-old 50, uh, woman from Tripura was killed when a speeding car rammed into her near the Badambugri gate in Dimapur, ladies and gentlemen. The car then reportedly ran into a scooter nearby and injured its rider. Uh, at, at this time, the show was going on here. The identities of the victims had not been ascertained. Preliminary reports said the offending driver is say to be about 38 years yeah so uh, the police has identified him as one tituka chishi he is uh, said to be currently in police custody reckless drivers ladies and gentlemen uh, underage drivers rash drivers drunken drivers and disrespectful drivers who can't tell the difference between people and roads that's what we have. We need enforcement authorities that watch over our driving behavior and our roads seriously. Dimapur seriously needs strong enforcement mechanisms to ensure the safety of the public, especially pedestrians. Who is going to pay for the loss of this family? In other news, Kohima has backed the Zone Y Smart City Award in the India Smart Cities Awards 2022. Earlier, the Chief Executive Officer of Kohima Smart City Development Limited, Keza, said the India Smart Cities Awards have become a benchmark for recognizing cities that represent urban transformation in the country. Kohima has received the coveted Zone City Award for the Northeast Zone for year 2022, marking an important milestone for the town's citizens. The President of India will be honoring the winners of the awards on September 27th at Indo in Madhya Pradesh.
One person was reportedly killed in Chunky village and another person injured reportedly after elephants attacked them, ladies and gentlemen. This was from the previous week. The report received here the previous Sunday morning said the animals had strayed into Chunky Valley. Sources had said village youths were sent by the village's council to chase the elephants away from the paddy fields there. Eventually, the elephants attacked the youths, killing one and injuring another. The injured person is said to have had broken, uh, the injured is said to have broken both legs. Um, it is believed that the incident happened prior to Sunday. Uh, as the report said, the funeral for the deceased person was being conducted when the news was first reported on August 27th. Ladies and gentlemen, let's try the next news. One of the most prominent and senior politicians from Nagaland, the then advisor for social security and welfare, Noke Wangnyo, passed away on, mon uh, on Monday morning at Dimapur, reportedly from a cardiac arrest. He was 84. Led Wangnyo was elected to Nagaland Legislative Assembly 10 times from the 43rd Tape Assembly constituency in Mon District. May his soul rest in peace. The Nigerian police arrested more than 200 people at a suspected gay wedding. This is probably one of the biggest mass arrests in recent years targeting the country's LGBTQ community, CNN had earlier reported. A police spokesperson in the Southern Delta state on Tuesday told reporters that 67 people will be prosecuted for allegedly conducting and attending a same-sex uh, same wedding ceremony. Same-sex relationships are criminalized in Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen. The country's penal court approves punishment of up to 14 years in prison for people who are convicted of entering into a same-sex civil union. Uh, earlier in a live broadcast on Tuesday, a police official called the event evil and said one cannot copy the Western world and Nigeria must follow its own culture. That's what he said. Britain's state-run national health services will be the first in the world to offer an injection that treats cancer to hundreds of patients in England. Ladies and gentlemen, the development is expected to cut treatment time by up to three quarters. Following approval from the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, the National Health Services of England said on Tuesday that hundreds of eligible patients treated with uh, immuno, uh, immunotherapy were said to have under the skin injection, which will free up more time for cancer teams. That was the report. The NHS said that uh, the treatment called the atezolizumab, atezolizumab, also known as tesentric, is usually given to patients intravenously directly into their veins via a drip, which could often take approximately about uh, 30 minutes or up to an hour for some patients. Atezolizumab is said to be an immunotherapy drug that empowers a patient's own immune system to seek and destroy cancerous cells. The treatment is currently offered by transfusion to National Health Service patients with a range of cancers, including lung, breast, liver, and bladder. The NHS said it was expecting the majority of about 3,600 patients starting from the treatment every year in England to switch onto the time-saving injection. This was a shock development even for the media, ladies and gentlemen. During the hearings in the Supreme Court in regard to the petitions challenging the abrogation of Article 370 from Jammu and Kashmir, the central government said elections in the Union Territory could be conducted at any time.
the Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appearing for the central government told the Supreme Court that it was ready for elections in Jammu and Kashmir at any time now. The national media reported that the union government on Thursday apprised the, on Thursday apprised the Supreme Court that it cannot give an exact timeline for the restoration of Jammu and Kashmir's statehood as it used to be but that it was ready to conduct elections. That's what the center said. It also clarified that the union territory status of Jammu and Kashmir was temporary. Uh, to Sharmeta is reported to have said that the inability to give an exact time frame for conducting elections is due to repeated law and order disturbances in the valley. However, he reportedly assured the court that substantial progress, substantial progress has been made to restore statehood. Meta reportedly al also said that the government is ready for elections and it is for the election commission of India and the election commission of the state to take the decision. So, appearing for the petitioners on the other side, the senior advocate Kabil Sibal opposed the statistics provided by the center on the status of normalcy in the valley. Violence continues in Manipur after the death of Kuki singer and songwriter L. S. Mangboy learned him. He reportedly sustained bullet injuries during a gunfight between the Manipur police commandos and Kukizo village volunteers in Kongsobang village in Churachanpur earlier. Landim was reportedly undergoing treatment with the other injured persons in Lamka, but reportedly he succumbed to injuries on Thursday morning. Meanwhile, the indigenous tribal leaders forum uh, called for an emergency shutdown claiming that several areas were under attack. In a statement, the ITLF said during that time, emergency services such as medical police, water, electricity and the press had been exempted from the purview of the shutdown. Ladies and gentlemen, ah, uh, China seems to believe that the world revolves around them. China released its 2023 edition of its standard map, standard map, which reportedly showed the state of Arunachal Pradesh and the Aksai Chin region as part of Chinese territory. The map released on August 28 showed Arunachal Pradesh, which China claims as South Tibet, not that they call the Arunachal Pradesh region South Tibet and Aksai Chin. It occupied it in, uh, in the 1962 war as part of Chinese territory. Uh, actually, China has a lot of problems with a lot of people and a lot of countries around the world, ladies and gentlemen. Taiwan and the disputed South China Sea are also included within the Chinese territory in the new map. The map also incorporates China's claims over the nine dash line, thereby, uh, thereby laying claim to a large, prow, uh, large part of the South China Sea. Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia and Brunei have all claims over the South China Sea areas, ladies and gentlemen. The map was released by the, Chi uh, by the Chinese Ministry of Natural Resources. Those were the top stories of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Again, Nagaland seriously needs to seriously consider strong foot on the ground action and enforcement to prevent motor accidents and loss of life on urban roadways. Likewise, we need to, we really need to revisit our urban health system and urban health management facilities, especially in the context of vector-borne diseases. Thank you for watching. I'm Al Ali and see you next time.